Did we descend from apes and hominids? Uh, the point I made earlier is this. According to Genesis, and God said, let us make man. The detailed story in chapter 2 and 3 of Genesis, which says that God took the dust of the earth and made human beings. Hebrew could have said very easily that God took an existing animal, but that's what it doesn't say. If you were ever trying to get across the idea that human beings were a product of existing animals, Genesis is a very bad way to do it. Because it appears to go in the exact opposite direction. So, my own feeling about it is that it is a special creation that human beings are utterly special, that God created them directly in his own image, out of pre-existing material, mind you. But as I said, if you're going by the story, it seems to be to lead away from that. I notice, though, which is interesting, that some of my friends who do take the hominid view, they still, many of them, have to say that God does something special to make that hominid a human being. But then, once you have admitted the principle that God does something special, why not go the whole way? You see, what I mean by that, ladies and gentlemen, and this is very important, it's this. That the problem is singularity. Scientists don't like them. That is a place where the laws of nature appear to break down. Now, physicists have got used to space-time singularity at the origin of the universe. Christians believe, of course, that God is behind that. Now, Christians also believe that there was a space-time singularity around 20 centuries ago. The virgin conception, the life, the resurrection of Jesus, the incarnation. That isn't a result of physical processes going on in the womb of Mary. That is God's deliberate intervention. Whether we believe it or not, that is what the text says. Now, where I come in is this. Genesis says, and God said. It doesn't say it many times. It's not saying that God did billions and billions of special creations. But it does say, and God said. So if you admit that the original creation was a singularity... The resurrection was a singularity. What is the in-principle difficulty in admitting that the origin of life and the origin of humanity, say, are equally singularities? In principle, I see no difficulty. You have to face the in-principle question. Now, I've tried to face that in my book, God and Stephen Hawking, and also in my recent book, Gunning for God, so I can't go into that tonight. But it seems to me that that is where the real issue lies. And as I say, scientists don't like the idea, and I'm accused of it all the time, that they say, oh, well, all you're doing is saying, you can't explain it, therefore God did it. The God of the gaps. They say that's the lazy way out. Yes, it is sometimes. But not if the gap tells you what the thing is you're studying. If I see that the gap, so to speak, is metaxas written on the sand, I don't think that saying that an intelligence wrote that on the sand is just saying an intelligence of the gaps because it's the nature of the writing that tells me there's an intelligence behind it. That's a totally different matter. So that's how I'd approach that question. <laughs>